Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Hey, welcome back to Impact Weekly. We're here with a new episode. And here's the question. I'm building a new CS team. I've been talking to many other leaders and trying to understand who should be doing the upgrade, customer success or sales. Mm, Very common question, I would say. Uh, And of course, uh, like a lot of times, there's not like one answer here, right? (laughs) Yes. No, this is this is definitely one of those situations. In fact, just kind of looking at the question, um, something that stands out to me is this person says they're building a new uh, customer success team. But what they don't say is whether or not they're building this team in a new company or whether yeah. it's an existing company and they're building a CS team. And I think this this matters because when you're talking about uh, who's who should be handling expansion sales, um, if you're starting from you know brand new, you're, you're, you're literally building customer success along with the rest of the company, you're going to be able to maybe... Uh, have more say in who you think should handle this, uh, you know, this handle the expansion part. If you're building a brand new customer success organization in a company that already has an an established sales or revenue team, um, you may have to work around whatever is already in place. So um, that's just something that kind of stands out there. Yeah. 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 Good point. And also, uh, of course, this evolves, right, as well. So maybe in the beginning, you don't even have something to upgrade a customer on. Um, uh, and then you start adding things, and, and maybe it's natural that customer success does that. And then you have a lot to upgrade, and maybe you merge with another company, and uh, there's a lot more to, to mm-hmm. do and uh, expand on. So this is also, of course, it depends on where you are on that journey and how far you... And how you how you how your company set up? So, yeah, there's a exactly. lot of factors playing into this, and that's why, of course, there's not one answer. But I think we still it's really important topic, and a lot of time, a lot of we get these questions quite a lot. So, I think we should still dig into it, and let's let's help this person out by breaking out some of the scenarios and maybe looking at pros and cons on on how you how you can set it up. And then everyone has to assess where they are, what they want to do, what they're trying to achieve. So, but but I think it's it's a it's an interesting topic that we could um, uh, evolve, uh, yeah, look into deeper and uh, help this person sure. uh, find their way, basically. Oh, for sure. I think I think we can I think we can add something to this conversation at the very least. Yeah, definitely. I think we've seen this uh, in so many different ways, but. Maybe we'll start just by looking at how how does it look like when customer success is doing up all the upsell, uh, yeah, and and what what are some pros and what are some cons with that setup? Well, the 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 pro is that the the customer success manager um, or at least the customer success organization. But you know, if we're if we're talking about sort of generalizing here, we would say that the the CSM is going to have um, a you know a relationship with with the customer uh, that that's built around trust and and is built around making sure that the customer is achieving their uh, progress milestones and that they're successful and um, so you know it makes sense that they would be the one that would that would understand where the customer is uh, along their yep. trajectory towards their goals and if they need to buy something extra to you know actually reach their goal or to accelerate their path to that goal, then it would make sense for the, the customer success manager to be the one to just add that, add that to their account. And if it's possible to do that, you know, just push a button and activate, you know, this feature piece of functionality or move them up to a different pricing tier or whatever, then the CSM should do that. Um, yeah. The con 
is the 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 thing people like to talk about is that that somehow hurts trust with with the customer. Like if the CSM's doing selling, but nothing I said right there had anything to do with selling. Right. It all has to do with understanding what your customer is trying to accomplish and giving them what they need to do to to actually achieve those goals. Um, if you're not putting something in front of your customer that is what they need when they need it, uh, you're not really doing customer success, whether that's something yeah. that they have to pay extra for or something that, you know, that's, that's already included. You need to make sure that you're giving them whatever resources. So the the only con with that is is either you you know you believe that CSM shouldn't be commercial so then this whole discussion mm. is sort of moot yeah but the other the only other con is comes down to complexity um mm. or you know complexity with the process of actually adding it to their account and this is where i say when things become too complex you should not have the CSM doing that work not for trust issues but just the CSM already has enough on their plate um, yeah. if, if a customer has to go through some, you know, contracting, uh, work and you know, just work through different you know, statements of work or, mm-hmm. uh, or, or especially if there's negotiation that, that is a skill and that's not necessarily something that CSMs have. Um, those things should be offloaded to somebody that, that has those, those skills. Other than that, if the CSM can just add it to their account, yeah, they should. So, you know, yeah. that's the most efficient way and that's the 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 cheapest, you know, if you're looking for uh, you know, to to be able to do this without added expense. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so CS there is it is possible for the CS team to be the ones that are doing the upselling and and yeah. that does that does happen. It does. And I, and uh, I think you mentioned something there skill. So, this is also mm-hmm. something we we notice a lot through our training programs that uh I mean, this is a skill as well. And, and traditionally, I think most customer success managers are not brought in to do expansion in the beginning, at least. Uh, but this is something they can really excel at. But you need to you need to um, make them aware of it. You need to have something to upsell, of course. But you also need to work on how you do that in a in the in the right way, right? Yeah, I mean, whether or not the CSM is the one actually "quote unquote" closing the deal. Hmm there's still a a lot of things you have to do um, to ensure that once the customer gets to a a point where buying this extra thing is the most logical next step for them, that they've been, that they've been sort of set up in a way that, that when that offer is put in front of them, that they're most likely to take it. And that comes down to this concept we call orchestration. And that is a skill that, that a CSM needs to have regardless of who's going to actually take over once, once the, uh, you know, to, to, like I said, to quote unquote, close that deal. So yeah, if we have an upsell opportunity that's attached to a progress milestone, um, and I'd like to say this, it's an upsell opportunity for the customer. This is really an opportunity that we're going to surface with the customer to say, look, when you make this progress, you get to this milestone, here is the thing that, that other customers like, you know, that, that have similar Mm -hmm. characteristics as you, that um, that have similar goals. This is the this is this other product that they chose to to add to their account. When you get to this progress milestone, we'll talk about adding that to your account. But you don't need it right now. But when we get there, we'll talk about adding that to your account. Is that fair? They say yes. Now they're thinking about it. And you know, if it's something that they need to budget for or or otherwise, um, you know, ensure that they have the resources to to implement. Mm. then they have some time to think about that stuff on their end. Then when they hit that progress milestone, we can say, Hey, congratulations. You've, you've achieved this progress milestone. We would say something that actually means something to them, not progress milestone. And we would say, now, remember we talked about, uh, this add on and you know, this is now that you've achieved this milestone, you're ready for this. Um, do you want to go ahead and add it to your account? If they say yes, um, and you're the CSM and you can just add it to their account, then you just do that. Mm. If, if you need to turn it over to somebody else, then you say, okay, well, like I talked about before, you know, uh, we're going to, I'm going to introduce you to our growth team, or I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. uh, tell your original salesperson that you're, you're ready for this. And then what I like to say is when you do that, also be transparent about the fact that, um, look, uh, I've told the salesperson or the growth team or the upsell team, um, that you want to add this to their, to your account, they 
uh, might try to talk to you about some adding some other things to their to your account. Um, and you know what? That's not a bad thing because you might get a really good deal. So you know, listen to what they say, but but they know exactly what you're ready for right now. Um, and then once you add, once they add that to your account, you'll come back. We'll get you onboarded and get you going, uh, just like we did before. You know, so that's basically the process. If you're the CSM, yeah. you can just handle that yourself. Great. If you need to turn it over, but orchestration is the skill. Um, but if you're going to be doing negotiation, you're going to be doing contract. You know, all of those things are also skills. Yeah. The problem is just as a CSM, you have so many things going on. Uh, like I said, I, I tend yes. to want to offload sort of specialist activities to people that that that's all they do, you know, yeah. because the CSM is just too busy. So it, it comes down to complexity and, and timing and process versus, mm. you know, like have somebody else do it because the CSM shouldn't be selling. Right. That's not that's yeah, not yeah. why you would that- you would separate those activities. Definitely, I agree there. Uh, that's a good, really good point. And I think also sometimes when when this question is brought up, um, they they are like they they think they have a missed opportunity in upsell in in the in the bus- in their business, and uh, they don't see customer success doing it. And the root cause for that can be many things, but a lot of the times, right, is that they are they don't have the capacity to do that at the moment. They are. Uh, completely over, overwhelmed with right. other things they have to do with turning turnaround customers, uh, onboardings, um, a lot of stuff on their plate. And I think it also, actually, we need to come back to capacity planning here as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, that's a whole different episode. But I think um, when I think I think it's part of this question as well. Absolutely. I mean, and so one of the ways that you would know if, if things are too complex is you would look at how much time your, your CSMs are spending uh, yes. working expansion opportunities with your customers. And, and if you're doing real capacity planning and really taking a look at, at, at different capacity requirements across the life cycle stages, you would see, gosh, you know, we actually have our CSM spending a, a, a pretty significant amount of time when there is an expansion opportunity, you know, sort of working through that process. So because we can look at that, objectively, we could say we really need to carve that out to a, to a dedicated specialist or a dedicated expansion team simply because our CSMs are spending way too much time in that um, in that phase of the life cycle. Exactly how you would do that for other phases of the life cycle, like onboarding, as an example, right? If your yeah. customer, if your CSM is spending a lot of time working customers through onboarding, it it's the logical thing to say, yes, our CSMs could do onboarding, mm. but... I think it makes sense to have some onboarding specialists now because they're just spending too much of their time in in that phase of the life cycle, meaning they're not able to work with their customers uh, that are in other phases of their life cycle. So, it, it, capacity planning is is the basis for should be the basis for you know the, the majority of your decisions around uh, carving out uh, specialist roles and figuring out who needs to be involved where, um, and and expansion is no no different. Um, yeah. Except with the only, the only part that's different is is again the cultural aspect of your company and whether or not your sales organization sort of runs the show, <laughs> yeah. which a lot of times they do, which means you know you may not be able to you, you may not be able to say you know we can just do this on our own. Sales wants to own that process, even if it's not. Mm. Even if from a capacity standpoint, our CSMs could do it. The other thing to keep in mind here is, is also the self-service aspect of expansion. Yeah. You know, some customer, if a customer can just add it to their account on their own, then we should, you know, we should let them like, but you know, a lot of times again, sales still wants to own that. And, and so we don't really have a say there, but you know, I think the mm. main thing here to understand is whether it's CS do it doing the upselling, it's account management growth or, or sales doing the upselling. Um, you're probably going to run or, or self-service customer doing their own upselling. <laughs> um, you're, you're probably actually going to have a mix of those. Like yeah. it, it, it's a rare situation. Uh, I'm trying to think like it's, it's, it's very rare that you're, you're just going to have one way of doing this. So yeah. depending upon your customers, depending upon you know, customers have an appropriate experience, 
they're going to have an appropriate experience um, for the way that they want to engage you across the life cycles, the different life cycle yeah. stages, including expansion. So there's, there's, you have to take that into consideration. Sales will want to court, sort of put what they want, which is, you know, probably a higher touch um, yeah, engagement when it comes to, uh, to trying to sell because that's just what they're used to. But, you know, we should take into consideration the customer's appropriate experience when it comes to actually buying from their point yeah. of view and give them what they need. So, exactly. um, yeah, so it's probably going to be a mix. It is. But it's important to uh, clarify the responsibilities as well. So I think that's part of this as well from a management point of view to say, okay, this is this is who's going to do it. Uh, yes. It uh, should be a very uh, clear process. It for should. no other and, reason. And, and, yeah, I was, I was just gonna say, for no other reason than clarity from the customer standpoint, so there's no surprises. Exactly. But, but from just a process standpoint, this thing needs to be mapped out very, very clearly. Yeah. And let's take the other scenario here. If if it's if it's only account managers doing the upselling, mm -hmm. so basically having uh, having customer success not. I mean, involved, of course, but that that it's not their responsibility at all. What what yeah. are the pros and cons of that setup? Well, um, it depends on exactly what how this how this plays out, and I've seen it. Yeah. So I mean, just saying, you know, only account managers or or sales or growth or upsells or whatever, but like only having somebody other than customer success handle this. Um, there's sort of a. a a, a, a wide variance of what exactly that looks like. Mm. Um, sometimes that means you have AMs or salespeople that, that literally just reach out to existing customers with zero uh, input or interaction with the customer success manager at all, right? Yeah. I'm sure as a CSM, you've had the unpleasant experience of a customer saying, hey, why did your salesperson just reach out to me? We, we're having these issues. Yeah, I don't appreciate that. And and now you have to like say, fix, fix well, <laughs> we don't really communicate internally, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So uh -huh. that's kind of the the one end of the spectrum, and then yeah. the other end of the spectrum, it, where CS is not, it's not really a partnership. We're not really working together, but you know, we're we're sort of you know sales or AMs or, or growth is sort of relying on us is this idea of, of CSQLs, customer success qualified leads, where basically the sales org comes to us and says, Hey, give us a, a you know, a list of customers that match this criteria. Mm. And, you know, which it, it kind of seems on the surface, like we're collaborating. We're, you know, we're, mm. we're really working with, with sales, but it's not, it's not actually, it's not as collaborative as, as we would like. Um, it's, yeah. it's really just sales seeing our existing customer base as a pond to fish in. Mm. And they want to, they want to fill their, their sales pipeline with, with qualified leads in the same way that they would fill it, you know, with marketing qualified leads or sales qualified leads that come in through, you know, SDRs doing outbound prospecting. Yeah. They're just looking at customer success as another lead source. Yeah. And this has, this doesn't really, you know, usually take into consideration our customers' actual progress. When they ask for a list of customers, it's usually certain, it's based on certain characteristics, yeah. uh, not necessarily on, on the customer's actual progress. And then they just work it once that list, is provided to them. They just work it as though they're working any other lead uh, yeah. that's come in. And of course, applying new business sales tactics and, and techniques, and even the mindset of a new business salesperson, applying that to existing customers with whom we already have a relationship mm. with whom we know what progress milestones they're, they're working through. Um, it, it, it's going to have, it, it's probably it not going to happen. It can, I mean, look, worst case, it can be absolutely disastrous. Best case, it's probably just not going to be super effective. Yeah. And this is why you see when, in, from the SQL, the CSQL world, um, mm -hmm. that sort of quote unquote collaboration between customer success and sales, you see win loss rates that look very similar to win loss rates of net new customers. Mm. Like, 
it's not that great. But these are existing customers with, with whom we have a relationship. Basically, if there's an upsell opportunity for the customer, remember, that's how I like to position it. Yeah. You know, this thing that the customer is now ready for, and I've orchestrated that. When we get to the point where they're ready for it, we should be getting quote unquote win wins off of that. The win rate should be like the inverse of what you get with new business sales. If they're closing 10%, we should be again, quote unquote, closing 90% of those, of those customers because it's based on their actual progress. Yeah. Yeah. But CSQLs and that whole, like, just give me a list of customers and get out of my way Yeah, that you see with, with, you know, this collaboration with sales that usually results in very low win rates against, against customers with whom we already have a relationship. Like it, it doesn't make any sense until you realize that, we're not really, we're not taking into consideration the customer's actual progress in that scenario. And, um, you're, you're, they're presenting the wrong product to the wrong people at the wrong time, basically. Yeah. And so, you know, only a few are they hitting just at the right time. And that is almost like luck. Yeah. You know, customer success, sort of customer success driven opportunities, that's where we move the customer through through those progress milestones, and they and we get to a point where the, a progress milestone has a logical expansion opportunity based on the customer's actual progress. Like that, that's what yeah. we should be focused on. But, um, you know, if you have sales a sales driven culture, they don't really want to hear that. They just want a list of, of leads to work. So yeah. you have to no. Uh, and of course, from a leadership <laughs> point of view, you want someone that's looking at NRR here because that's going to make you, the whole difference. Uh, uh, so, so you don't have. I mean, that that if you have an AM and a CS organization reporting to the to a chief customer officer that that owns the NRR metric, uh, that helps a lot, right? Absolutely, or or um, a chief revenue officer, somebody that's that's you know, yeah. over the the commercial aspect. Yeah, and you know, world class CROs and CCOs, they they know that this whole idea of of <laughs> this this sort of fake collaboration between customer success and sales, where where we're just giving a bunch of leads to sales to work, they know that that's not really the most effective way. Um, and, and so they 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 take this approach of you know let's let's move the customer through these progress milestones, and you yeah. know we know that some of these progress milestones have those expansion opportunities associated with it. And, and yes, at some point, once, once they reach that milestone, we can deliver that opportunity to upsells or to sales or, yeah. or whomever, and they can work that opportunity. But at that point, they're essentially taking an order because, you know, the customer's ready to buy. So it really yeah. is an opportunity. It doesn't have to be qualified. It doesn't have to be worked. They can try to add other things to it, but at that point, you know, this can actually work out as a good deal for the customer because they're, they're ready to buy this thing. Maybe they, they bundle some other stuff in there, but you know, they're the problem I think from the sales standpoint is they feel like there's, they don't have as much control over that because we're waiting on customer success to move the customer through these progress milestones. Whereas if I'm in sales, I can take that lead list and I can work it right. I have some more control over it, but yeah they're, they're taking a short term view of it rather than just a little bit longer term view and, and not understanding that if we just move the customer through these progress milestones, not only uh, will they be ready to buy when we get to that progress milestone, here's the, here's the really interesting thing. A lot of the times they move through progress milestones that have expansion opportunities uh, quickly and a customer might actually end up having multiple expansion opportunities within like one oh, calendar yeah. year. And, and you could, you could literally expand a customer multiple times over, over the year, but salespeople will, will be, even though they might, they might be kind of aggressive and they have these, these, these targets that they want to hit. They're probably not going to go back to the same customer more than once, you know, in, you know, at least in, at least in a couple of quarters, um, because they they don't want to they don't want to burn the list they don't want to overdo it, um, and so they actually miss out on opportunities. Whereas customer success driven opportunities are you know can come up much more frequently, and and actually end up doubling or more the value of that of that customer account. 
So yeah. this is, you know, I think a lot of times it's like, That's oh, sales. That's huge. Right. Yeah. It, this is huge. And if we let sales take over this whole process, that they, what their new business tactics are going to result in is like incremental growth. Hmm. If we take this customer driven, customer success driven opportunity approach, we are actually looking at exponential growth in account value. So for mm. your book of business, exponential growth in revenue under management, as an organization, this is going to have a dramatic impact, obviously on ARR, but mm. also on NRR. So net revenue retention, it's going to yes. offset churn and contraction. Like this is, this is yeah, such yeah. a powerful way. And then you shouldn't be just looking at this from the customer success leadership role. Like if a CRO or CCO um, or any other executive is looking at this, they should be looking at customer success driving this process and leading to exponential growth as the preferred uh, method. And like I said, world-class CROs, they know that this is the way to go. Um, yeah. It's it's just everybody else who sort of lets the salespeople, um, you know, kind of do their thing and, 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 you know, kind of run, run over everybody and, and get their way. Um, that actually ends up leading to just incremental growth and, and a, a low win rate, uh, which is yeah. just crazy. Cause we're talking about existing customers. We shouldn't be having a, a low win rate. We shouldn't really be having a win rate at all. We should just be having customers buy what they need when they need it. Yeah. Because we, we, we understand that and we work them through that process. So anyway. No, and I, yeah, and I think a lot of us can relate to these, uh, these, these, these great relationships, these great customers you've been working with that kept doing more with you, kept buying more from you as well. Uh, so, I mean, I think we all know, we've seen the power in when we, when we leverage uh, this uh, and, and we do, do really uh, add more value for the customer along this, um, this journey together. And, and they, I mean, we usually say that like lack of expansion is a bad sign, right? And yeah. I, I think, I think this is, uh, this is really true, and um, and I think we need to have the customer's view here as well. I mean, I, what you just said, it, I, I want to repeat that because it, it, a lack of expansion, so just simple renewal uh, is not enough because if, if customers are successful, they should be evolving and growing. And of course, this is where you actually have something that, that is logical for them to buy more of. But in, in, in most cases, there's going to be something that, that as they evolve and grow, that their relationship would grow and evolve as well. And what that means is in a situation where that's, that, that's the reality, if they're not buying more from us, that really is a bad sign because it means that they're not increasing their investment with us, that, they're not, that we're not growing with them. So yeah, I mean, this isn't about like, yes, of course, it's about adding revenue. It's about growing and, and all of that stuff. But just from a customer success standpoint, if your customers have a logical reason to buy more from you and they don't, that's curious. That's at least a reason to mm. intervene and just say, okay, what's going on here? Right. It may not, it may be fine. Like maybe they're, who knows that there may be reasons why they're not, but in general, um, it, that's something, that's a reason to kind of take a step back yeah. and figure out what's going on there. And if you see that with a large swath of customers, then there's really an issue. And if you see this with large swath of customers and the people handling upsells are your salespeople and, and they're getting a really low win rate on those upsells, mm -hmm. you know, like this is a reason to, to intervene or at least bring it up with your head of customer success and say, okay, something's not right here. Our customers are not yeah. buying more. We know that they should be. I think our salespeople might be trying to strong arm or, or otherwise, you know, actually hurting the relationship. Um, it, it's, a, it's at least a reason to, to figure out what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's a, it's a very good exercise and, or is it, if it's CSM or CS organization that should be handling upsell and, and we, we still see very little coming through, then it might be back again to this capacity planning. Maybe we, yes. we need to free up their time. We need to, maybe they're doing actually, actually doing support, uh, rather than doing <laughs> this important things that we, we want them to do. So right. I think it's the right, you know, sometimes it's, it's all about asking yourself the right questions. And I think that's one of them. Yeah. I mean, and so you can, you can look at, you know, are our customers moving through progress milestones? Like that's, you know, when we're, when we're trying to figure out, are, 
are the CSMs doing what they need to do in order to make the customer successful and ultimately to, mm. to help them grow in the way that they need to? There are some operational metrics that we can look at just to make sure that, that the customers are, are getting what they need. One of the things we can actually do is, is figure out, are, are our CSMs orchestrating expansion with our customers? Like, yeah. are they actually doing that? And you can, you can listen to gong recordings or you can just uh, whatever to kind of keep track of, of, of whether or not they're doing this. And that's an operational metric because if they're not orchestrating, it could be that they don't have time. It could be you know, that they're, they're not preparing for their meetings. Um, it could be just that this isn't something that, that they are trained on. Um, but if they're not orchestrating, then, then the likelihood of customers taking the, the upsell when presented with it later goes down significantly because then it becomes something sort of out of the blue. They didn't know, they didn't see it coming. They didn't expect it. They didn't budget for it. They didn't plan for it. Um, yeah. And now, now they feel like they're being sold something, right? So orchestration is a really important part of that, but operationally, like that's a leading indicator of expansion. Mm. If our customer, if our CSM is orchestrating this with their, with their customer, then we, we have a much higher percentage uh, or it's much higher percentage that they will take the upsell later on simply because they know about it and they're prepared for it. So orchestration is an operational metric as well as just a uh, sort of a framework for making sure this happens. But yeah, all of that said, yes. let's make sure we have like some concrete takeaways from this. Yes, let's get into it. So um, if you're building a new CS team um, and you have to um, take some uh, decisions around who's going to uh, be responsible for the expansion or the upgrade, um, these are our three concrete things to consider. So I'll take the first one here. Okay. There, as we said in the beginning here, there's not like one answer here. Uh, you need to find your answer, uh, depending on where you are, uh, depending on if you're building it from scratch or if you're coming into an existing organization. But it's very important to be uh, very cautious here and, and conscious. Uh, so it's clear internally who owns this. Uh, because it's it's very important for both your organization, but even more important also for for the customer. Absolutely, and I I think I mean I, that can't be that can't be overstated. Um, the managing expectations with the customer is is huge, and that means you have to have a very well defined process. So um, I would say so. My my takeaway would be independent of whatever the setup is, we need to create an environment of actual cooperation between customer success and, and, and account management or, or sales or growth or whomever is going to take over and, and close the deal with the customer. Um, this can't be a one-way street where we, we just give you know, the salespeople a list of customers that match criteria and call it good. We really have to work with sales to make sure that they understand that our customers are moving through particular progress milestones. Some of those are going to have expansion opportunities for the customer. You know, when those are, when those are reached, uh, then we can turn those over to, to, to the sales org to handle in whatever way that they need to. Um, that's real legitimate cooperation. That's real collaboration. Um, not just, customer success being a lead source for sales yeah and last but not least i think expansion is huge it's a grew it's a huge uh, growth opportunity but it's very different from new business sales and if you want customer success to be driving expansion you need to train the team on that uh, so i think that's that's the other part to this uh, question that that's really important um, and of course, we, we cover this in Impact Academy. We have an expansion program there. So that's an easy way or easy, but it's, it's a very effective way to get going on this. Um, so those are our three main takeaways from this question. Uh, interesting t topic. And uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of people out there looking, at, uh, looking for answers here. So uh, keep the discussion going, by the way. Uh, ask more questions. We will cover them in our podcast. Thanks for listening. See you soon. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? Check out Impact Academy. 
We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success. 